All right, today we are going through assembly of a Pioneer Series CVT uh, Mount Shasta extended fly with the Stargazer. Uh, this is the newest one that we have out for this year, for 2017. Um, so let's just get started. Um, first of all, get the box open, get the straps cut off. Make sure you don't use a knife very deeply. You don't want to cut into your tent. So I just cut the tape at the top. Get it opened up. Take the cardboard off. You'll find your, your manual at the top. And then what I like to do is go ahead and use the box as protection on the floor. Um, so you just kind of screw it down, staple it on both sides. Lay it open so you have a nice clean work surface. Um, I always like to leave the tent up on end like this. It makes it a lot easier when you're reaching through to do your hardware um, on both sides for the rails and the ladder. Um, on the end you'll find your, your rails for your floor. side, undo the two cover straps with, with or your or going over your travel cover. I'll block this up, undo the, undo the buckles on both sides. Uh, you have a nice buckle like that on both sides. Go ahead, open it up. Um, in between the folds, you will find your spring rods and your hardware kit. As you'll see, we have new logos on our tents with the new badge on there. Uh, you'll see that all of our Tents now do have the stargazer option in it uh, with the clear plastic and the rain fly. And you also have a zippable mesh and then also a fabric on the inside to make it completely dark if you like. And at this point, what you're gonna do open up your doors on both sides. And inside you'll find everything else for the tent. Um, annex room, which is included with every single tent we sell. Made with the same high quality fabric as the tent itself. You will find the floor for the annex. Your travel cover. The bag, the travel bag for your annex room. Um, inside, the, inside that bag, you'll find a piece um, of protection for under your ladder when you are using your annex floor, so that way your ladder doesn't wear holes through your floor. And then also a bag of stakes for the bottom of the annex. You will also find a bag of goodies, which we'll go through here in a little bit. We 
You'll also find your ladder inside. And another new thing for 2017 that we decided to do. Um, you will find your spreader bar for over the doorway on the extended flies. Um, you also see that there is a hole now for the spreader bar to clamp on to the interior bars. You'll also find included is a annex channel um, so that way you don't have to remove your travel cover to install your annex. Another new thing is that we do have a, th a three inch pad now um, instead of the two inch uh, for a little added extra protection on the floor, a little more comfortable. Um, gonna just overall be that much more comfortable inside the tent. Um, another new thing you'll see on the Pioneer series is we end there's now D-rings underneath to be able to hang accessories when the floor is folded out. Um, it's great for hanging a lantern or anything like that um, at night. So you light up underneath the tent. Um, another thing, so, First things first, let's go ahead and get rid of the plastic coating. Um, this was just on for shipping and going through the process of assembly of the tent. Let's go ahead and take a knife, trim around the very edge of it. Find also our floor is a lot thicker now um, to help with the denting and stuff like that. Very nice floors. And now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side here. in the toolkit. I'm going to readjust the camera here so hopefully I can show you what we got going. Sorry about all the movement, just doing this all on the fly so we make sure everybody has the best idea of what all comes in the kit and how to assemble the tent. So first things first with the toolkit. 
and just dump everything out. All right, so you get a nice bag to keep all your extra stuff in. Uh, you will have bungees for inside the tent. Um, this is to help assist with the clo closing of the tent. Um, kind of helps keep the fabric pulled in. You'll find the two stakes for when you're not using the annex for the overhang when it's really windy. Uh, you'll make sure you want to use those. The ropes are already attached to the tent for where you could tie those down. Um, you'll find in all of our tents a 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a 10 millimeter backing wrench, and a Phillips screwdriver for later on when you need to, if you ever have to retight in uh, the self-tapping screws. Uh, you'll find four end caps for the rails um, to help with the wind noise and just aesthetics of how the rails look. Uh, you'll find your ladder mountain hardware uh, for through the floor and attaching to the ladder. You'll find four mounting plates for going around the rails of your vehicle. Uh, you'll find eight slides with bolts and nuts. You'll find four rail mounting hardware. And then you'll find four self-tapping screws for the end of the rail. They also throw in some washers um, you can use them or you cannot. It doesn't really matter either way with those. Uh, we just, I'll give you that option. Um, you will need, on, besides all that stuff, for the self-tapping screws, you will need a Phillips drive um, to help drive those into the floor. Um, we'll start with the rails. Get these out of the package. Which we try to do the best we can with making sure things aren't damaged when we ship things out. So you'll find that most of everything is wrapped up. Um, it does take a few seconds to unwrap everything, but that way, you know, hopefully we get things to you not damaged. Um, you'll find you actually get two little nice things that you can turn into bags for extra hardware later or something like that. They're great for keeping in the back of your car for small stuff. Um, there's the two rails, you'll see that there's mounting points for the bolts to go through. There's also two sets of holes. Um, so if you decide to turn the rails for your tent to deploy off, like off the back of your vehicle, uh, when you cut these off, there'll actually be a pre-drilled hole for where the self-tapping screws go through. Um, so with that, let's start putting the stuff through the floor and getting the rails attached. I'm going to move this over this way now. So on the floor, you'll see that there are holes. Um, on the shafts, there's only two, two holes per rail. Um, and your rails are going to run the length, so the long way on the floor. Um, if you want it to deploy off the side of the vehicle, it'll go the short way. If you want it to deploy off the back of your vehicle. So with that, I'm going to get this back here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, you are going to take two of the hardware. Up. So that way you can access the holes from inside the floor. You are gonna take the nut off. Take the nut off. You have a big washer and a bolt, which you're gonna slide through the inside of the tent. So it pokes out the other side. Do the same thing at the bottom. And then the way I like to do it is I will get it lined up, go inside, hold the bolt, get both bolts through the rail, and then I will drop the nut 
through the top of the rail. Let's adjust that up so you can see what I'm doing, obviously. So, once I've dropped the nut, the, the nylon facing out, um, it'll fall down until it hits the bolt. And what I do is slightly pull it out, let it drop to the next one, make sure I kind of push that top bolt back up. And then what I do is put my finger underneath the bolt and then slowly back it out so the nut will drop in front of it. And then just tighten it finger tight so the thread's on. Make sure you don't cross thread them. Um, and then I'll do the next one, drop it in. I'm gonna try to get this over here so you can actually kind of see what I'm talking about. So you can see that the, the nut fell and hit on top of the bolt. And then what I do is hold on the inside, put my finger below it, just back it out a little bit and slide it to where it falls, lands where it is, finger tighten that up. And then you will see that the rail is a little sh it's short on, so there's about a finger width up here. You can adjust this up and down. And what I do is try to split the difference between both sides or basically the width of the cap that you're going to be putting on. Um, so basically the width of the top of the cap, um, which is a, you know, a little over an eighth inch thick. You know, so when it's pushed in there that the, um, when it's pushed in there, let's get a little closer so you can actually see it. Camera's not auto focusing for some reason. Um, once you get, so you can see, so you can see that it's really hard to see. So the light in here is terrible, but basically I'm going to slide this pretty well. There's only about a, you know, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch exposed at the top there. And then the next thing, once you have those bolts to do the back, um, you're going to basically reach inside the tent through the door, um, hold the rail in place where you want it to be, and then just take your 10 millimeter ratcheting and wrench, go inside, get it to where it needs to be, tighten that thing up. You don't have to tighten this thing super tight, you just want to get it nice and to where it snugs up to the floor. And then just a little extra. You don't want to dent the floor dramatically on the inside. And also if you tighten it too much, the bolt will poke through enough to where you, when you go to slide your sliders through, it will hit. And not allow your bolt to slide, your slide to slide through the track. So that's nice and snug. What I typically do after I'm done doing that, I'll take one of the slides. Um, and put it into the track, slide it through, make sure it doesn't, the bolt doesn't actually, you know, hit the top of that bolt. Um, and now once you got that done, I'm going to grab a, two self-tapping screws in my drill and use the hole that's provided at the top. Um, to go ahead and tap in one of the self-tapping screws on both ends. And you'll see that the, the head of the screw will want to catch the inside track as you're going in. Um, just make sure that if it, you're go drilling it in and it catches, don't just keep hitting it. Back it out just a little bit and kind of do it all one force all the way through and the head will just kind of pull itself through the upper track until it's flat. Um, once all right, so next you want to grab your, tent, your ladder mounting hardware, which is the bracket, bolts, 
and ladder bolt. Um, first, you want to just remove all the hardware from the two that go through the floor. Place the washer. Washers on the bolts. And then through the bottom of the floor, at the front edge, you'll see there's two holes here, two holes here. Uh, just feed the bolt through the inside with the washer on the inside. Once you get the bolts in, I usually use my fingers to hold it in place. Put the bracket on. Use your nuts to finger tighten them. And then you're going to do the exact same thing down below here. And the next step is you're going to remove the, the hardware for the ladder. Um, it's, you have a bolt, a nut, a washer, and then a nylon washer um, for each side of the ladder. And then you just want to grab your ladder. Your ladder is also bubble wrapped. Just wanna cut the tape on it. And then you'll see that there's a flat side, an angled side, and then you have the locking brackets on the front of the ladder. So you just wanna make sure this side is to the tent. Uh, what I do is I'll use my knee to hold up the ladder. Get it on the insides of the, it needs to be on the inside of both brackets. So you just want to make sure you get to do the bolt either way. Um, I usually do it from the outside, then the black spacer, which is the nylon, so the ladder slides. Then you got a washer. And the bolt, and the nut. Same thing on the bottom. Again, just finger tight. The ladder will support itself at this point. Um, at that, you're just gonna grab your Backing 10 millimeter and your ratcheting 10 millimeter. Go ahead and get these snugged up.
don't want to over tighten them because you still want this to be able to slide. Uh, it wants to be able to slide easily, but not so loose that it, it, it's moving around inside this joint. Go ahead and do the other one. here when it's to, to the right tension. And then same thing on the inside of the floor. Um, kind of want to just make sure you have a nice straight line here when you're tightening them. Sure they're nice and snug. You don't have to go crazy, but just make them snug. Snug, you just want to swing your ladder, make sure it, it's snug, it moves easily, it's not digging into your nylon washers. Alright, and then once you've done that, um, all you have left to do is throw it up on the, on the vehicle um, and then get the cover put on, which we'll walk through here in a moment. Um, besides that, right now I'll walk you over here to see what comes in this new goodie bag, basically. All right, so with the goodie bag that you did, we did show you in the tent, you did have the, the spreader bar, your included annex channel um, right there so that will we'll show you how to get that put on here in a minute um, then then all your spring rods and then you have this random bag that's in there um, this is all the goodies that we decided to just go ahead and include with the tent so first you'll find you got a, a, a second rain fly this one does not have the clear plastic in it for the stargazer, so if you did not want that option, or if some reason your rain fly got damaged or anything like that, there's a, a secondary rain fly included. Um, there is an extra zipper replacement for the cover. Um, for some reason, if you ever like jammed up your zipper or you got fabric stuck in it and you broke the zipper or anything like that, there's an extra one included. Um, patch kit, one of the floor, the cover, and the tent body. And then also you'll find another bag that's in there. And this one has, let's get it opened up. So if we dump this one out. And this one you'll find that there's replacement cap ends for your spring rods. Um, some extra hardware, so if you ever stripped out the aluminum 
you lost it, you had a bolt seized up on you or something like that. There's four extra of those. Um, there's like six or so of the end caps for the spring rods. A um, couple of extra end caps for the, the rails on the floor. Um, you got extra cover straps. You have extra side buckle straps. So if you ever break those or they get sun faded over time. Um, you got a couple extra nut covers for inside the, on the, the tent body. There's the frame that goes up. There's some big bolts that there's some covers over so you don't wear through the fabric over time. Um, and you'll actually find an, a secondary 10 millimeter wrench that I'll probably just throw this one in with the other wrenches so that they're always in the same bag. Other than that, that's everything that you get as a freebie with the tent. Um, so that way you have all the extra parts if need be. All right, next is the annex channel install. <coughs> so what you want to do is pull that out of the bag. And also in the bag, you're going to find self-tapping screws, some flathead, three flathead tapping screws. You have your annex channel. Um, you can see that it's a, a Y shape, pre-drilled holes in it already. Um, so this is going to sit at the foot of the ladder inside the channel with the, the open slot facing outwards. Um, you'll see that there's already pre-drilled holes, so all you gotta do is line it up, center it, and screw it on. What I usually do is I'll, I'll put the first screw in. I'll leave all the screws kind of loose because it's going to create a bunch of silver or uh, aluminum slivers. So that way you kind of knock it around, get them out from behind it before I finish tightening it up at the last. Right, that's the annex channel. So now I don't have to remove my cover out of this opposite channel on the other side to get my annex on. I could just leave my cover on and still install my annex. So and I'll kind of give you a, an overhead look at that. So you can see Oops, sorry about that. So you can see the channel in the floor, down the front side, and then it's just three screws lined up. It sits down about, you know, you, can, you have a natural line. I usually just use that natural line on the floor to come off of. Um, so there's that. Everything is attached, ladder's ready to go. So basically now it's just a matter of mounting it to your vehicle or your trailer or whatever you're gonna put it on. So we'll walk through that next. All right, so the next thing is that you wanna take your travel cover. Once you had it, get it up on the vehicle, 
I usually do it before I slide it all the way up to one side or in the center. Um, it's going to slide, your travel cover is going to slide into this lower channel here. Um, I usually take one of those tent stakes and put it in there and then slightly, slightly open that opening a little bit on both ends so that it makes it a little easier to slide the cover through. And then what you do is you grab your cover, you'll have basically this black bead, sometimes it's blue, but usually black now. Um, and then you'll see that there's a zipper on every other side. So the black bead is gonna slide into this channel with the logo on the back facing the vehicle. Um, and you just, this is guided in. You wanna lift and hold this straight so it slides in, doesn't snag. Slides in. And you just want to about, about an inch or so overhang on each end, inch and an inch and a quarter. Um, that way the travel cover is basically ready to go. Um, I'm just going to toss this up over the top for now so I can slide the tent over. back so you get a little bit better view of what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and center this front to back and side to side. Um, you want your bars to be anywhere from 28 to 34 inches on center. Um, you just want about a foot overhang on each end of the tent, um, especially on the Shasta. So next is the mounting hardware, which you have, you're gonna have one mounting plate and two of these per, per corner of the tent. Uh, you wanna make sure that the bolt is dropped through in the channel. And then you're just gonna put it through. I always pre-start one, um, so it's on here. Um, and then you're gonna basically take the track, which has two side dog ears on it, and you're gonna slide it into the track. Make sure the bolt is completely seated so it's flat um, when you're putting it in. And then I just lift up the corner, slide it to the other side, undo my other nut, place the other one in. You can put these in too high um, or cockeyed, um, they'll still slide in there, but you just want to make sure you're completely set all the way in. straight down, uh, which I'm going to get a better view of it over here um, so you can actually see it. Again, sorry for the camera movement, working with that cheap tripod here. So you can see I got the bracket on both sides around the bar, both loose. I'm going to grab my 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Go ahead and start tightening. Uh, you do want to put some downward pressure on the plate as you're tightening <coughs> so that the top of the bolt doesn't come up out of that aluminum channel and start spinning at all. Um, so I always kind of push down and push up on my wrench at the same time. Get it about level. 
right. And now I'll do the other side. Get centered, get my bolts straight up and down. And you want to tighten it to where the, this metal bracket just starts to arch, just barely. Um, and that'll be plenty tight. You don't want to over tighten those. Um, because you can just keep tightening and tightening and this thing will just keep bending and bending. Um, you do not need to go that tight. So you're basically going to, you're going to do that same thing on all four corners. Um, get all that done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the others done here now. Um, you do want to have all your brackets in place before you tighten down the bolts um, on all of the because you won't be able to lift your other corners up. Um, I just did this for demo purposes. And then, so yeah, I'm gonna get the other ones done here now. All right, so now that I have all my mounting hardware on all four corners, um, next step is to put the caps in the end of the rails. Um, I usually start with one top upper edge kind of in the hole. Um, with a smooth face hammer, just slightly tap them in. And then you just have that on all four corners so it's nice and finished. Don't have any sharp edges or anything like that. Um, it also helps with the wind noise. There's that. All right, so the next step here is after it's all mounted, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back down. And then make sure the buckles on both ends are undone, which I've already did. And then after that, both buckles are undone, the cover is down, got the ladder, slide cap, you should hear that click. By the time this round part of the ladder gets to the end here, you should hear it lock in so the ladder won't, doesn't slide out. Um, it's a matter of just pushing down, and then when you're about here, you're going to do it all down and out motion on all other ones so that the, it just flips forward. So the fabric will be fairly tight. If you want to double check, just make sure your tongue and groove has completely come together here. Uh, it's a nice flap that covers up everything there. Uh, you will have to drill the ladder to get the appropriate angle, which is about a 30 degree angle on the ladder. Um, so that way um, your ladder is not too steep where you climb up and down so it doesn't slide out from under you. The ladder is part of the, is the support for this side of the tent. So with that, um, this is the extended version. So we do have three straps here that you need to lace through the rain fly. Uh, the first time, once they're done, you'll never have to undo them again. Kind of just do a, about midway, so I'll do the final adjustment once I have the the U bar underneath this overhang. So once you're at that point, you are going to do the U bar, which I'm going to move this closer, so hopefully I can get eyes on it. As you can see, we do have a new logo on the side of the tent. 
Um, we got our new badges on them, uh, very sharp looking. Um, you do have the rope for the, t the tie downs when you're not using the annex on the really windy days um, or if it's raining or anything like that. It's always good to tie it down, use the stakes that we provide. Um, so the first, thing, first with the U-bar, first time you're going to want to pull this all the way out and re oh never mind we changed where you don't have to remove the cap anymore um it looks like it's just gonna actually just plop right in there if, if everything if i'm guessing right which it does fit so never mind you don't have to remove the plastic cap this will help keep um, when you're sliding back into its resting place when you're not using it, um, that way you don't tear the mattress or the fabric at the end of the poles. Um, so, so with that said, um, in each corner, you do want to take this little guy, flip it forward on both sides. Um, I do have this flip forward so I can kind of show you how you do it because you're going to be putting it both into the in like that. Um, you do want to make sure how I do it is I pull this out, I go up inside, you're going to push the, the round part of the, the curve of the U-bar all the way up into the front corner. Um, I set one bar kind of up in the hole above the bracket just to hold it while I get the other side situated. Once I have the other side put on, now I come over here, I usually set it on top of it like that, and then push it up slightly. And then it'll drop in on, onto that. So I'm gonna get you in there so you can kind of see that a little bit better. Um, the light's not very good in here. You can see that's on there and there now. Um, that's all the way up in the corner. Um, just about now it's all the way in the corner same thing over here and then back down to this side um, if you come on the outside here you'll see this is pulled over like that um, I could probably tighten that up just a little bit you just don't want to tighten this so much up that this is gonna start bunching up like that you want it to hang down but also be to where this isn't gonna fly up so let me see here a little bit there. So you do want to. I got to that middle one. I got a little bit too much. So it's going to look like that so far. Um, Gonna walk around the back side here. Uh, you will have to tighten the three straps here. Um, once you finally get all, everything all set up, you wanna snug those down to where they're not loose so it's not flapping as much when it's windy. Um, so let's walk around the back side. Um, I'll show you what we're gonna be doing here. This let's see if I can make sure you get from Good angle here. All right. So on the back side, you want to, you're going to want to flip all of this down all the way around. So that way, weather, rain, stuff like that will just run off. Um, you want to undo this toggle and then find the corner of this rain fly. And on the back side, you're going to see the little velcro. Velcro, you loop through this outer loop, metal D ring, you open the outside in, and then you just take that, go down to the where the corner just gets down to the D ring, right there. You can do the same thing on this side. You'll never have to undo this again, it's just the first time that you're setting the antenna up. And then that way you have the rain fly. Loose. There's the toggles for when you're buttoning down to put it away. 
Um, you got your other door slash window on this side of the tent. A nice new three inch pad. Big old monsters. Um, so at that point, um, what you're gonna do is, next step is spring rods. So you're gonna have two spring rods here on the rain fly only. And then both side windows, you're gonna have spring rods on the corner here and the corner there that you untoggle that. And then where these little black slits are down here at the bottom, there is a hole drilled behind it. Um, that slit, that is a slit, so you could put the spring rod through there. Um, so you're just gonna untoggle the windows. Very easy. Uh, make sure the flap is down. Um, the flap here is larger than our older ones, uh, just to give a little extra, extra coverage um, to make sure no cold air and stuff is coming into the tent. Uh, you do have the, the one ridge vent up there on both sides um, to help with the ventilation. Um, but you also do have that stargazer, which you can completely open up the screen, um, help with the condensation when you're in really humid, rainy areas, snow, all that kind of good stuff. So I'll go from this side so you kind of see how these spring rods work. So your spring rods are going to come in a bag, you'll have six spring rods for the extended version, you'll have eight spring rods for the standard fly version. Um, the, the Denali will actually have a few extras because it's so long. So again, undo these, I'm going to take the spring rod, because it's so low it's really easy for me to go ahead and just open this up. Insert the spring rod, it goes in about an inch or so. We're slightly angled outwards to help put tension on this. And then all you do is bend this up, hook the, the ring here. Um, it's gonna pop that out nicely for you. Um, you can also, if it, your vehicle's higher, you can go inside, unzip the windows, reach out, do the same exact thing. Or you can first hook the end and then grab it by the middle and just push up on the end of it and just bend it that way. That. Put that one in. So that way it's nice and popped out. Um, these rings are for when you're rolling the screen up or the inside up that every Every layer of window has its own ability to roll up um, and be stored that way. Um, so there is the window nice and popped out. You can see it's all out and nice and taut. The fabric's not super loose. Um, and then you basically you just have that back corner, which I'll do that from. I'll do that here really quick. So now you see you got the rain fly popped out, you got the window popped out, you got the overhang in. Uh, so the next step would be to go ahead and do the spreader bar inside the overhang. Let's see if I can get this angled in here correctly. So the spreader bar um, is a, a, an adjustable bar. It has two U-shaped clips on each end. So 
So above, above the door, you'll see that there's a pocket. Um, you want to reach up, grab the bar on the inside of the tent so you can guide this bar onto it. Snap it on there and then extend the bar to the, other, the overhang. Snap it on there. And then what you're gonna do is just spread the bar a little bit, give it a twist, lock it in place so that there's not a, a ton of tension on it, but just enough to keep, just enough to keep the, so you can see that end snapped on, that end up there is through the hole snapped on. Um, and now that there's not a big, now there's no sag in that part of the tent so when you have a bunch of rain or snow it's not gonna bellow down on you um, and also it was nice with the light wind because now it's not gonna really lift at all um, as far as the cover goes you can leave it hanging down you can roll it up 90% um, of the time I just let it hang down like that over the side of my vehicle um, it's just most of the time it's not necessary for me to roll it up, but you can roll it up. Um, with that annex channel, you can put the annex on with it hanging down like that now. I don't have to remove that. But yeah, this is our 2017 Shasta Pioneer extended in the green. And let's see here. So you can see the Stargazer plastic in the top. Um, the other, the other Raiden fly that it comes with does not have the clear plastic. So that way, if you tore this one, um, or if you just did not want the extra light for some reason, you can cover that up. All right. Well, thank you for watching uh, the quick um, assembly of the Shasta Pioneer with us here at CBT. All right, you guys have a great day.